Serie A back with a bang this weekend. Five matches on Sunday, the one on Monday. But my, look at that Saturday slate. Derby de la Madonina, Inter and AC Milan. Plus you got Napoli and Atalanta. Should be a fun match to watch in uh, Juventus there. No CR7 uh, should be in action Saturday afternoon. For more, we welcome in Adriano Del Monte and Stuart Robson back with us. Adriano, I'll start with you since you're in Milan. Give us kind of the scene on the ground there ahead of this Derby de la Madonina. Inter has dominated this rivalry for a long time, but nobody's talking about that right now. People are talking about the increased number of COVID-19 cases, not just around Italy, but specifically in Antonio Conte's squad. Absolutely, Inter have won the last four Derby de la Madonina fixtures against AC Milan, but they will be without six players due to the COVID-19 crisis here in Italy. The numbers are rising. There is cause for concern, but certainly on the pitch plenty of concern for antonio conte's men we come into this busy schedule now where inter will obviously rejoin the uefa champions league and plenty of action to come but looking ahead to this weekend it will be a different look into milan's side particularly defensively with two key players set to miss there in the form of Skriniar and bastoni so we could see a couple of changes for conte of course the big news though for ac milan zlatan ibrahimovic is back and I'm certain he'll be keen to score and lead Milan to, well, a rare recent win in this fixture. Bravo, as uh, Adriano mentions there, Zlatan is back for AC Milan. Inter Milan devastated not just by the COVID-19 situation, by injuries, suspensions as well. The odds makers actually have Inter in as a pretty significant favorite. You still see it that way? I do, because most of the players that are out, I don't think, would have started. Skriniar uh, would have probably started, Bastoni likewise. But they've got Kolarov, who can play in that left-sided centre-half position. D'Ambrosio, who's done really well in, in recent times, playing either as the right-sided centre-half or as the right wing-back. And I still think they've got a good midfield that can, can outplay uh, AC Milan. You know, Kessie and Benacer are good players, but they could be outnumbered in that central area. And then you've got the front two for Inter, who are still magnificent when they link up together. Uh, Lukaku showed in the international break that he's still playing really well. He's still good with his back to goal. And Lautaro Martinez works off of him. So I still think Inter are the favourites for the game, even though AC Milan are playing very well and the manager's done a fantastic job for them. Adriano, I wonder, who do you suppose is under more pressure in this match? We have Milan, who are undefeated in the league, undefeated across all competitions so far this year. But Inter Milan definitely came into the campaign with much higher expectations. No doubt about that. And Inter Milan are under pressure coming into this match. These are the matches that they must win if they are to finally end Juventus's dominance here in Italy. But look, Milan unbeaten in 19. They've made that perfect start to the season. Three wins from three with all due respect against the likes of Crotone, Bologna and Spezia. This is definitely a step up in class for them. So pressure on Inter, but I think Milan now have set the stand and they'll be expecting a positive result here this weekend, and I think they're more than capable of achieving it. Adriano, uh, let's move off the field here. We've all been following the saga between Juventus and Napoli. Not only are Napoli going to lose this match as a forfeit, going to go down in the books as a 3 nothing defeat because they didn't travel to Turin. They're also going to be docked a point. This all after the local health authorities told Napoli not to go. From the outside looking in, this seems extremely harsh against Napoli. What's the reaction there in Italy? Exactly that. 3-0 uh, is one thing, but the one-point deduction, another. We are expecting that Napoli will appeal the decision, I think rightfully so. And I would be shocked if that one point at the very least isn't taken back. So, look, it does set the precedent now going forward if and when this does happen again. And as I mentioned earlier, the surging case numbers here across Italy, you do get the sense that we will have another situation very similar in the not-too-distant future. We've seen a number of cases at Genoa particularly. So one to keep an eye on, but I certainly think we haven't heard the end of this saga between Juventus and Napoli just yet. So what do we think that happens, Adriano? Should we get to this situation again? The local health authorities tell a team, specifically Napoli, not to travel. Are they supposed to go against those directives, or are they just going to keep forfeiting these matches? Well, it's a very complex situation, of course. We know that the season started a little later 
than previously it would have. We know that there are the European Championships next summer as well. So the current rule states that if you have 13 players available to play, then you must play and you must take to the field. And I think they're trying to do their very best to adhere to those rules. And in what is a very difficult time, obviously health and everyone's safety is most important. But if we are to continue with the season, then I think that's the rules that we'll be adhering to. But for what happens beyond here, time will tell. I do think, as I said, Napoli will get that point back at the very least. Is there some concern that the season may at some point be in jeopardy? I mean, we saw the outbreak with Genoa. We have the Juventus team in isolation now. This is going to become untenable should it continue this way. Of course, it, we are very real about the situation. There were a number of people here in Italy who were questioning the recent international break and why that went ahead. Two interna international breaks within the space of a month to get the new season underway did feel like a lot. Of course, when we look at Inter and Milan this weekend, the likes of Lautaro Martinez, Alexis Sanchez, Arturo Vidal, all returning from South America it's a lot of travel to be taken by these players in the current climate. So, look, there is concern that the season will have a few more issues. But so long as we are best prepared and, and equipped to handle it as best we can, that's all we can do at this very difficult period in time. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Plenty more on Italian football on the latest edition of the Serie Awesome podcast. K, Matteo, Nikki, Mina, and sometimes Gab covering all things from Serie A. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.